Hello, card floppers. Welcome to One Pack Retro, where we open one pack of trading cards from throughout gaming history. Uh, it's been a while since we've done a One Pack Retro. It's also been a while since we've done D&D &D Weekend, so I figured might as well do two in one go. Um, so this uh, is... It's hard to explain. Um... Well, not really. It's before, I don't want to say before Dragon, but back in the day, um, TSR, the people who at the time made Dungeons and Dragons, put out these cards, which had stats for monsters and people and items and all whatnot, so you could, you know, add stuff to your game. They have stuff from AD&D, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, the most popular up until about 5th edition. Um, Forgotten Realms, everyone knows that one. Greyhawk, Spelljammer, which came out recently. Dragonlance, Ravenloft, Dark Sun, and al -Qaedim. Uh Some sets you may, some worlds you may have heard of, some of you about. 16 fantasy cards, counterfeit proof, limited edition, random sequencing. That's good. Tamper proof pack. Yeah, looks tamper proof to me. MSRP of a dollar. Like I said, this came out in uh, 92. I had a factory set of this. I don't know why. Like, I was never into D. I uh, wasn't into D&D &D back in the then, but. Alright. Oh, we're starting off strong. Martha Big Bones. Seventh level illusionist. Uh, let's see here. Martha is not a small woman. She has tried repeatedly to lose the weight she carries. Failing this, she turns to illusion to mask her size, and she found that she is a remarkable talent for magic. Now that she enjoys as much food as she wants, she's delighted in seeing the face of her male companions as she gorges herself while remaining slim. Yeah. Uh, welcome to 1992, folks. Layla Nekroloff. Nekroloff? Nekroloff? Third level druid. Layla has always lived in the forest and cannot really believe that there are anything else worth living. Is it is anywhere else worth living? Sounds like a bunch of people nowadays. Um, she taught herself the ways of the woods. She recalls no parents nor any other human contact. She cannot speak the common tongue but seems to clearly understand nearly everything every forest creature. Those who see her always believe that she's a dryad or a nymph. Obviously not. Aldo Gladhand. He's got a burp. Uh, oh, Aldo's ring conveys a wisdom score of 18 upon him, bolstering his spell capacity. He loves birds and he is considered to be a oh, fifth level priest. Um, he loves burps. And is considered to be an expert in imitating bird calls. Aldo is looking for a druid to befriend in the hope that he will learn such tricks as talking to animals and the ability to shapeshift. Hey, they should be buddies. They're in the same place. Benson and the bear. What's Benson got? He's a six level druid. Benson used to be a circus performer. Ah, and trained bear wrestler until he became sensitized to the rights of animals by a ranger who kidnapped him and forced him to live in the forest for a month. That'll do it. Shortly thereafter, Benson freed his animals, became a druid, and began to travel the lands with his former wrestling partner, Muscles the Bear. That's a troop for you. Sagus. He is an 11th level druid. Sagus is a crusty old veteran. At level 11, uh, having gained all his experience on the battlefield, unusual for a druid, he is a mercenary, hiring himself out to whichever side is more sympathetic to the ravages of the war of war upon the natural environment. Ah, uh, he is not a brilliant warrior. Oops, but his charisma is inspiring to the troops. We've got Trilliana, third level druid. Truliana is so much 
like an animal that she runs away when other humans approach and is generally ignored by other animals as if she were one of them. I think I found my spirit character. <laughs> Her origins are unknown, but those who care to speculate usually fall back on the raised by wolf scenario. The source of her training in the Druidic arts remains a mystery, too. She may be a student of the elements themselves. Sure. Oh, we got a magic kettle. How magical is this magic kettle? Mithril's ever bountiful soup kettle. Mithril. Card 443. I like how these reference other cards. Remains in such excellent standing with her god that her delicate that a delicious bowl of chicken soup from her magical kettle actually has the power to cure of a cure serious wound spell. 2d8 plus 1 hit point. If Mithril prays for grace over the soup, there's a 50% chance that it will act as a cure disease spell as well. Any lawfully good aligned characters may use the two gallon kettle with similar results. The DM must judge whether or not the character is in a particularly good standing with his god. Or the kettle's special card won't work. It's a very fickle kettle. We got Magical Glass. Joel's Glass of Preserved Words. Joel is an archaeologist rogue. What other kind of archaeologist are there? Who adventures solely for the pure purpose of discovering ancient civilizations. He has removed a few artifacts and numerous magical items in his mini quest. His glass of preserved words makes illegible written words readable. Ooh, that's good. Uh, he has also paid a wizard to enchant the glass with a permanent comprehend language spell so that he can translate the various cryptic scrawls that he discovers in his searches. Joel's glass has aided him in many treasure hunts and is worth well the 10,000 gold, gold pieces he invested in its enchantments. Got another magical lens. A lot of magical items here. Evelyn's lens of speed reading. Whee! This lens performs the same function as any other lens of speed reading. Triples reading speed. However, Evelyn has been her lens with another power. It contains a built-in comprehend language spell that can be invoked once per day. The lens will not read magic without the accompanying spell, but it will decipher codes and improve illegible Ill 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 writing. The lens will also detect explosive ruins, but if the reader passes over them at triple speed, they will explode. Oops. He must stop reading as soon as he detects them in order to avoid setting them off. Magic Mirror. On the wall. Malto's Mirror of ret Retention. Malto. Guard 473. Inherited... This magical mirror from his father. The mirror records all events in the past 24 hours that occurred in the room when it, where it hangs after after its command word is spoken. Uh, mm. Ugh. Oh, don't put it in a brothel. By rotating the mirror clockwise, Malto can fast forward the recording. A, counter, a counterclockwise twist rewinds it, and a horizontal tip pauses the recording. Furthermore, by placing a piece of parchment over a still shot of the recording and invoking the clair invoking the clairsaint science object reading, Balto can transfer a copy of the image to the mirror onto the parchment. It's a goddamn CCTV video. <laughs> oh, we're in the Forgotten Realms now. Magic retort. Mmm. Retort. Kennel's Philosopher's Egg. Kennel, card 425, has always looked upon the magic as a means to wealth, but not in the, and not through such dangerous yet mundane methods as adventuring. He prefers the treacherous world of power brokering. Wow, okay. Trade and politics are his sword and shield. Recently, Kennel engineered a political takeover of a thieves' guild solely because he knew that the guild had come into possession of a Philosopher's Egg. Now that he has the retort, he will finish his preparation of a Philosopher's Stone and then use it to revitalize the economy. In other words, he's going to be filthy rich. Okay. We got Boyong. He's an 11th level smuggler. Oh. Boink. 
is known to associates as the Smiling Smuggler. Indeed, he has a wonderful sense of humor. While other rogues are talented at picking pockets, Boing likes to use his bag of disappearing to plant contraband on the bodies of custom agents while they're searching his goods. After the search, he steals his goods back. Good for him. Now well, we got something from Dragonlance. Valo Downy Heels. Six level scout. Oh, a kinder. I don't know what race that is. Valo's irresistible urge to just poke around got him into quite a bit of trouble until he met a party of adventurers with, that appreciated his curiosity. Now, as a scout, he encountered he is encouraged to poke around at every opportunity, as long as he does so outside of camp. We got Greyhawk Adventures. Talin Jila. Jalen Tila. Yeah, okay, I said it wrong. Fourth level rogue. The man Jalene is a thief who specializes in gems, but he is actually not a man at all. He is Tila, the daughter of a noble family from the hold of the Sea Princes. She ran away from home, sailing to Greyhawk aboard one of her father's ships, and joined the Thieves' Guild. She is posing as a male, so she so she will be harder to find. So far, she's been successful. Hmm. She's got a fierce mustache, too. Nickum Penderbolt. 12th level cat burglar. Funny, she doesn't look like a cat. Um, Nick's friends often brag, he's too humble to do himself, that Nick, oh, it's a guy, uh, that Nick has climbed everything over 10, everything over 10 feet walls, everything over 10 feet tall in the Shire from whence he came. While this may be exaggeration, Nick can find finger holes that elude most of the climbers, and he has used his skill to scale and enter many buildings. What else are you going to do with that kind of ability? And from finally, from the Garden Realms, we've got Ar Archidemus Lucreid. Lucreid. Lucreid? Luchard? He's a level level wizard. Archidemus runs a small shipping company in Westgate and maintains shipping contracts with several noble families there. His business is quite successful, which finances his magical training and experimentation. Archidemius, I guess, is also quite uh, quietly establishing political clout with his customers. Good lord. Um, I mean, it's a... Well, I don't know. I, I think there would be an MVP. I would give it to... This. Mithril's ever bountiful soup kettle. I mean, soup that soup that cures you. I mean, wanna, you know that's that's got to be pretty damn cool. So that is the TSR collector card series two collector cards, nineteen eighty two. Uh, I got these from got these from uh, Etsy. Um, oh, I didn't turn on there. Uh, mm. Oh, I'll get the name to you next time because I have a rush of a weekend here. So, trying to film when I can, what I can, what I can, when I can, where I can. Uh, in any case, I'll see you tomorrow. Have a retro-tastic weekend.